Hey, it's Luca. Um, I am working with a new client um, who sells watches. Um, they have an e-com store. And um, so I, I generally like to do some research when I get into um, a specific product space um, and kind of look at the competitors. Um, we're doing some brand strategy for them, brand storytelling and things like that. Um, and I'm super into the luxury and uh, premium space. That's where a lot of the DFY clients that I work with um, through the video side of uh, the agency, um, we work a lot with them. So I genuinely like to kind of see what's out there and how people are telling their brand stories, especially in a world that's so online. Um, so I've been, because I'm working with this, um, I'm coaching on this on this account, this uh, watch account, um, I've been looking into some watches and it's really, really kind of made me see that um, watches are very interesting. And so I'm going to get into one particular company, Rolex, probably heard of, um, and do a little bit of a brand story audit of their site because um, they've been in the game for a really long time. You know, they're over a hundred years old and they do some really interesting things that I think a lot of um, brands, even if you're not in the watch space, can learn from um, because they've had years to figure it out. Their brand storytelling is top notch. They obviously have a lot of brand strategies that they're executing and they do really well. Um, and so those are companies that you generally you can just learn a lot from. So I'm going to dive into that in a second. Um, and I think that was it. I think I think that's all I wanted to say about that. That basically I'm just going to go to the Rolex site, do a little bit of uh, brand analysis on what they're doing right now. Um, a lot of these companies are regularly changing stuff up. So this is what the Rolex site looks like as of March 11th, Friday, March 11th, 2022. So let's just get into it. I'm sure I could say more stuff, but um, I won't. So one sec. So there it is right from the beginning. So right away, we're hit with this really incredible video. Um, this is a pretty, I'd say it's a fairly challenging video to make because you've got to have really good cameras. There's definitely motion graphics involved used in After Effects and, uh, you know, shot in the studio, capturing pieces that are essentially incredibly small, but they're making them larger than life, essentially, in this video. Um, obviously, well, yeah, watch pieces, they're very tiny. And right away, you're just, boom, full page on the site, right into the details of the watch. And you'll see as we kind of read the copy, the amount that they put into their detailing um, and their brand positioning essentially, which is really, really deeply enmeshed in detail orientation um, and, and how seriously they take these products essentially. Um, so Just Date is the name of this watch here, the classic watch of reference. They've just recently brought back um, one of their old models. So they are have revamped it and kind of put it on the site. So as we scroll down a little bit here, we've got Rolex watches are crafted with scrupulous attention to detail. So as I was just mentioning, this attention to detail, and they're really showing it in this video. This could have been a still image, but it's incredibly dynamic. The page loads really fast. So they've definitely um, done a lot to, uh, to, make, to, to make it that way. Explore the Rolex collection of prestigious high precision timepieces. Just going to read, I'm just going to read some of this copy. Rolex offers a wide assortment of Oyster Perpetual and Cellini watches to suit any wrist. Discover the broad selection of Rolex watches to find a perfect combination of style and functionality. And then their two calls to action here. Their direct call is watch finder, which they assume, you know, that's like buy something and then configure a watch, which is more of a transitional call to action. I like that they're right side by side. Because on your site, you want to make sure you, you are hitting direct calls to action, but you're also hitting these ones, which are like, hey, let's just take the next step. Um, this isn't about buying right away, but we want you to um, be, you know, be part of this family and really just try them out. Similar to cars. So they've, they've taken this kind of right from the car market, which is a big part of sort of luxury um, is exploration. And especially in a world where when it comes to premium and luxury as well, like, you so much of it was based on the storefront going into the store and that experience and so 
how do you bring that to a site when not everyone is going into stores anymore? You can't rely on one-to-one education. Um, you can't rely on that relationship building component of what was arguably most of this brand's history. So their ability to translate that into this site, I would say is incredibly successful and has been successful because it's not that easy to do. Um, so uh, moving on from here, I just wanted to mention this suit any wrist. Now, the thing about this is that it's really good copy, but the thing is it doesn't necessarily suit any wrist. I mean, one, it's kind of funny because most wrists are the same. Like unlike obviously fingers where you've got, even with the, the millimeters of difference in a ring finger, I'd say most wrists are fairly similar in size, right? Obviously with, with some, don't totally quote me on that, but most of them are. So obviously if you have a watch, it's going to suit any wrist. You don't necessarily need to say that. The other thing is that it, when it comes to who's wearing this, it may not suit any wrist, right? The wrist that it's really going to suit is people who want what this brand offers. They want the luxury. They want the prestige. They want the trophy. A lot of their advertisement is around this idea of kind of it being this trophy there. And I'll get into it a little bit more on the bottom of the page, but they are have aligned themselves in that sports world for a long time. And um, this becomes its own entrepreneurial trophy. That's really, I would say, where the brand story lies and the and the story that you as a customer are being invited to be a part of is that this is a, you know, scrupulous attention to detail, very prestigious, high precision, you know, high precision also taken from car markets, sports, all of that world. Um, and so that's really the risk that they're talking about. And if you want to be part of that story, then it'll suit your risk, basically. So moving down here, you've got essentially their collection. Um, they do an incredible job at naming products. So there's a few things that a brand can do. The brand can be on its own, like just Rolex on its own. Um, the side story about how Rolex came to be in its name was um, the guy that made it, he really wanted a word that could be said in any language. And that looked um, uh, symmetrical when written in capital letters. So definitely succeeded in that. And he apparently like took all the letters from the alphabet and wrote them all out in multiple forms until, um, and felt like he didn't find anything actually. And then apparently he was uh, maybe, I don't know, on the street or something like that. And some, someone whispered in his ear, Rolex. I mean, that's kind of how the, the legend goes, but who knows? Or maybe he heard Rolex and that's kind of, he wrote it down and that's sort of what happened. But um, Anyway, so you've got the main brand Rolex, which is telling a specific story. And then you've got the sub-brand watches, which all tell their own story, but within the Rolex family. Apple's also very good at this. You've got Apple, and then you have the iPad, the iPhone, um, the watch, all of those things, right? And they all have sort of different purposes and kind of span the customer base that they've got. So um, I'd say if you're looking at naming your products, it's really, really important to name them very strategically. And this is where brand strategy really helps and comes into play. So you've got Datejust here, which is they're calling it the classic watch of reference. Um, we've got the Explorer, pretty self-explanatory. The word Explorer right there evokes a lot in the mind of the customer, like you ask yourself, I am I an explorer? Ooh, I'm kind of an explorer. Like this is the explorer that's obviously also wealthy because the watches are, you know, thousands of dollars. Then we've got Oyster Perpetual. Oyster was apparently one of their first watches. Um, and Oyster, what that evokes is um, like waterproof in it. Like the fact that the Oyster is like closed um, and it's under the sea, it's like can it's able to sustain high pressure and um, it just evokes all of that beauty and oysters are also fairly elegant. So they're drawing on the elegance that is already the idea in the mind of the oyster and putting it into this watch. You also inside the oyster, you get pearls, which are also very high status. So they're playing on all those elements in this and never overlook like 
stories that already exist in the human mind. Because if brands are just stories and brands are just how people feel about you, like how the, the, the mind, how the customer's mind perceives the brand, then playing on any story that already exists in human history is a huge asset, depending on your positioning and where you're trying to go. So we've already understand the value of pearls. We already understand the value of oysters. We already understand their rarity and their exclusivity. So you just get it. And it's part of what Rolex represents. Then you've got Sky Dweller here. You know, it's this pulls a lot from the aviation side of things. If you look at other watch brands, um, whether it's, uh, you know, Omega or uh, Breitling or any of those things, there's a whole air element, this idea of aviation and um, pilots and time and the kind of status that comes with that. This is a big theme that other brands like Playboy and things have played off of for a very long time. So the Sky Dweller brings a lot of that. Keeping track of time across the world too is like your metropolitan or cosmopolitan and, and metropolitan. And, and it's a very 007 sort of vibe, right? Then over here, we got the GMT Master 2. Um, to me, this is called the Cosmopolitan Watch. To me, the GMT vibe is kind of in the racing side of things, which another one uh, coming up has that too. You know, they've been very aligned with F1 for a long time, fast pace. Um, even their site, as of like a month ago, their headline was um, Born to Race. So, and so they're constantly changing it up. I mean, it's amazing to me when like I work with a client and they're, they've had the same headline on their site for, months if not years and it's like no brands are meant to evolve they're meant to transition they're meant to um you know be in motion and so literally like two months ago they had a total they had like a different headline so just bringing that up but this brings up kind of to me racing with the gmt part of it then we've got the day date obviously got it's got the day at the top so that's kind of where this name comes from the ultimate watch of prestige now, any of these could be the ultimate watch of prestige, but they've decided to name this that. Personally, to me, I think it's probably just because like they're trying to think of something to say. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, and I, I do really like this green and obviously this style too. Um, cause not that this is about what I like, but I'm just... I'm just saying. Um, Cosmograph Daytona. This was the Born to Race one. So I guess they, that's what they were promoting maybe like a month ago. Um, and we're back to, you know, the Daytona Speedway and 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 all of that. Um, and then we've got Yachtmaster. Pretty explanatory. I love that it says Yachtmaster right on it. It's got that nautical blue. Um, it's very sort of, you know, on your boat, on your yacht. Like definitely a vibe that I, I could... Any one of these, I could find a story that relates to myself in these watches. But when you're when you're looking at these products, you're asking yourself, is this me? And how does this fulfill a part of myself that I want to express? And it's a huge part of luxury marketing um, is that idea of transformational identity. So and then coming up next, we've got Lady Datejust. So obviously, it's the female version of the first watch that was shown submarine so again this is another thing that they've definitely taken a lot of photos of and they really like this idea that they're equating rolex with you know being able to perform under pressure being able to go deep into the depths and high into the air and like base keep telling time and keep being steadfast and keep being strong and keep continuing to be immaculate and then, you know, the reference among divers watches that they even have a photo on here somewhere of like a deep diver. I mean, are you going to really wear your Rolex deep diving? Clearly people do, and they're supposed to be made for that kind of pressure. But the point is you probably won't. But if you buy it, you're bringing that part out of yourself. That idea that like you are this submarine deep diving adventurer that's just ready to kick ass while being rich and you want obviously the best possible stuff to do that with similar with the sea dweller here the watch that conquered the deep very similar positions here but just you know slightly different and then we've got two other oh well should i keep going 
Okay, I'll do all these really quick. Quick. So this one's calling honoring science. I'd call this look a look a little bit more professor, um, but still super nice. Um, the Cellini, the classical watch with the leather band. This is also an incredibly popular watch. Then we got Pearl Master, the Pearl and the Oyster collection. So they're not, they're bringing out this Pearl side and diamonds of Oyster, and then Air King. Back to that idea of pilots and just. You know, when I think of pilots, you think of just these incredibly competent, sort of ready to risk it all and be just, you know, you're and heavily trained and high precision. So they're bringing that out in this Air King. Um, and, and again, in, in anyone who wants to feel those things, even if you like never flew a plane in your entire life. <laughs> so um, going down to here, I, I love this element because it shows that they're very future forward and they're really understanding what it takes to can maintain relevance as a brand. Like, uh, so for instance, say, I was just reading this line here. Anyway, saving lives on the Indian roads. And then there's a video about it. So this is a lot of like what my done for you agency does, which is make these videos that highlight the brand values of a company so that they can keep putting stuff out on their site or into social. And I just love that they're doing this. Um, I think all brands, especially luxury. And if you have the money, like if you're doing over a hundred thousand dollars a month, you should a hundred percent be making ongoing video stories that, that keep bringing the brand to life. Because essentially what they're saying with this is like, we care about people, you know, this site is a story and there literally might be 50 words on it. And then we've got a couple of, um, we've got a couple of blog articles here that continue to associate the brand, the Dutch masters. This is about the dog jumping or I think it's horse. Actually, no, this is horses. Um, but again, very prestigious. They're aligning themselves. Horses, prestigious. It kind of like what Polo did and Ralph Lauren. Rolex and the art, aligning themselves with art. Um, and, and they're just really good at that. I remember when I first started watching tennis, you know, they're all over that because they understand that the values of tennis relate to the values of the watch, high stakes, driven, dedicated, masterful, um, and competent. Um, and then down here is what, um, actually I learned this from Don Miller. He calls the junk drawer. It's just all the other stuff that is not on your homepage that someone might want to go to and, and do some more deep diving on your stuff. People get mistake putting all their stuff on the homepage. So one of the things I was working on with this client is like really stepping the homepage down, not stepping it down, stepping the homepage up, but stepping the amount of copy down because most of the brand's image, which is why people buy, is going to come from visuals, photos, and videos, and some well-placed copy. I think I counted the words on this site. There's like less than, there's definitely a, like less than 60. There might be 50 important words, not counting the names of the products. Um, so, and then the rest is just all imagery. If you click into the watch, you know, you're going to get, even more like, look at that. I mean, this is very aligning, aligning with this type of stuff helps bring this watch to life. You know, if you've got products and you're trying to build the brand around the products, you have to think about um, the fact that you almost have to personify them. You have to figure out what they represent at their core meaning or what you want them to represent at their core meaning, and then align that with imagery that helps make that make sense if that makes sense and helps just like solidify that in the mind explore right here, got the watch, got these guys hiking the mountain. If I buy this watch, I'm basically as good as climbing Everest essentially. So um, yeah, so I'd say feel free to go check out this site. I think it's a really good um, case study on, um, you know, how to do luxury in today's day and age. Again, when you don't have a storefront and really audit your site, and your brand to ask yourself, like anything that is in your marketing collateral that doesn't forward the message and that doesn't continue to push the brand values and what you're trying to communicate to a customer, again, with words or not with words, I'd say get rid of it. You know, like 
there's nothing on that site that takes you out of the story, out of that story of all the things that I've been talking about. Um, and so you've got to be critical. You've got to have uh, an outside eye sometimes. And um, you've got to, you've got to really ask yourself, yeah, like, am I, am I, is all this stuff that I'm doing communicating what I needed to communicate so that people understand exactly what they're getting and exactly why that they should buy. That's all I got in this video. Um, hope you're having a great day. Oh, and good luck brand building if that's what you're doing.